If you have an Excel workbook like I do here that has a bunch of contacts you want to import into your Outlook contacts folder, you have to convert it into a CSV file. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But first of all, let me introduce you to this. You can see the name of the file is import contacts. And then it has a dot and a bunch of letters after it. That's known as the extension. The definition of the extension is that it tells the operating system what program to open up this file in. So it knows that XLSX will open up in the Excel program. If you change that to something else or delete it altogether, it won't open up at all. Or if you change it, open up in a program that it doesn't understand what it's looking at, so you get a bunch of gobbledygook. In any case, if you want to learn more about how to view the extension, hide it, or if you're running into problems opening up your files because of what could be an extension issue, then you can watch my Windows training video on extensions. In any case, we'll change that into a CSV, and you don't have to have the extensions turned on to view it to be able to change it. This is an explanation that I wanted to go over, so you have an idea that, let me go ahead and double-click to open it up later on, how that's going to look after we convert it. So here's a very simplistic database up at the top in the first row, known as the header row. As you'd learn in my Excel training video, it contains all the labels for each of the columns. So like first is for the first name and all their first names, last, last names, company, title, and street, and so on. Then I have a total of three records, and the first record is in row two, Henrietta, Jason, Grant. And notice how it's structured. It's all together. It looks pretty clean. And you want to keep that in mind, or actually have your database structured as such. In fact, I recommend that you watch my Excel training video on the top design flaws in Excel when it comes to creating your database. Because if you have a bunch of gaps and spaces in between your fields, your records, it's not going to be a clean import. And so to avoid any problems, make sure that it's structured thus. And you can, of course, watch my Excel training videos on those design flaws. And then up at the top in the header row for the label for this column first, that's not going to be the name that Outlook has for first name for the contacts folder. I believe it's going to be first name. So keep that in mind because when it comes to saying, okay, I want all the first names that's called first to be in the first name field, because it doesn't have the exact name, it's not going to put it together. So we're going to do what's called mapping, and I'll show you that through the import process where we say, okay, the first that I have here is going to be tied or take all the data down below and put it into the first name field, or that's called the first name field in the contacts. And so to exaggerate, to make a point, you don't want one of these fields, like last name, going into the first name incorrectly. So as long as you understand the labels and what they're tied to, then when we go through the import process, you'll be able to find those fields that are for the company and the title and the street and be able to pull them together, map them. So when you click Finish, it pulls in all the first names into the first name field, last names into the last name field, and so on. Whatever Outlook calls it, like instead of email, it'll be email address. So let's go ahead and do this. But before I close out, we need to go ahead and convert this. As you can see up in the title bar, the extension .xlsx, it needs to be a CSV file. So to do that, in Excel, go ahead and there's the Save As command. I'm going to click on that. Open up the Save As window, or you can go backstage, File to Save As, and then come down below and change the type from the Excel workbook .xlsx and find your there you go, CSV, comma delimited, or CSV, comma separated value file. Select it, and then go ahead and click Save. And then it says, some features in your workbook might be lost if you save it. Do you want to keep using the format? I'll say yes. And then you can see up here in the title bar, it's now the extension .csv. And if that's not recognizable enough for you, I mean, it's so tiny, you probably can't see it. Let's close out. On the desktop, we now have two files. We have my original workbook, and then we have the conversion when we saved it as a CSV file. So the icons are different, right? But what's interesting is that it still has the X on there that the operating system knows to open that up in the Excel program. Why is that? Because the extension .csv has been tagged by the operating system to open that up in the Excel program. And that's cool, but remember, the values in here are separated by commas, but when you double-click on that, it's going to open up in Excel, and you won't see those commas, because what it does is it translates, and it says, okay, with every comma, we're going to have a value. So it would be like the first name, comma, last name, comma, company, so it automatically breaks them up and puts them into their own separate cells. As opposed to, let me close out, right-clicking on it, Going down to Open With, and instead of Excel, we're going to open up Notepad, and that's what I'm talking about. 
there's the separated values, like the first name from the last name by a comma, comma separated value, comma, comma, comma. So the first row are your labels, the second row is the first record, Henry Etta, then Jason, and Grant. So like I said, close out of that, it can see that, and quickly convert that and put those separated values by commas into their own cells. That's why it's still tagged to Excel, but you can right click and open it up if you want in Notepad. So let's go ahead and import this because it won't import an Excel workbook. It has to be a CSV file. Into our Outlook contacts, come down below and click on the button to restore our Outlook program, the window here. And before I go ahead and import that, let's go to our contacts because in my personal folder, I have nothing here. So I'm showing you. I've got nothing up my sleeves. We're going to import them right into here, okay? I cleared it out from the earlier training videos where we had the people in there, moved them off over into the contacts folder, so we had an empty folder. Okay, now let's go ahead and import. Come up here, click on the file tab. Let's go down to open and export, click on it, and then down to import export, well, one of the same button. Let's just go ahead and click on it, and we get the option to import as opposed to export. So import from another program or file. With it selected, click next. And then you can see here, the only option you get, well, the PST is not an option because that's an Outlook file, is the comma separated values, which is what we saved as from the Excel workbook into a CSV file. So select it, click Next. And then we need to find that CSV file. Click on Browse. Come over here in the navigation pane, select Desktop. And it's right there. See that CSV? And you can see down below, it's only looking for CSV. Won't see anything else. So let's go ahead and double click on it so it points the address right to that file. So when we click finish, it knows where the file's at and pulls in the data. Now the options are that you can replace duplicates with items imported. So if I already had contacts in here that had the same email address, name, it would replace those, overwrite them, or you can allow duplicates to be created. So if I had carry once listed here, there'd be carry twice, carry three, as many can be created here, duplicates. So you can also do not import duplicate items. Well, since there's nothing in there, it doesn't matter to me. So I'll just go ahead and leave it as is and click Next. And then there we go. Okay, so what you're looking at here, that's the deleted items folder. So don't focus on those contacts there because we don't want to import them into the junk folder. Scroll up. There's the contacts folder. And in the contacts folder, we've got these two other folders. So you could go ahead and select contacts, which is that right there. But I want to do the personal. So with personal selected, click Next. And then the following actions will be performed. It's going to import the CSV into the folder, Personal Folder, which is right there. Now before I do that and click Finish, it's a good idea to click on Map Custom Fields because the fields that I have, most likely, and I can tell you right now, do not match, so they are custom fields. Let me go ahead and click on it because, let's see, over here is the CSV file window, the fields that I have in that file. Then over to the right are all the fields that are available in Microsoft Outlook, the Contacts folder. So you can see the field company, it's over here, company, it found that. And over here, because it was the same name, it says, okay, we're mapping it. So whatever data you have over here in your CSV file, underneath that company field, will automatically pull into the company field, that's a field in the contacts. So that was easy if you got the same name, but you may not have memorized the names exactly as Outlook would accept it over here. So for example, we got first and last. Let me go ahead and expand the name. Okay, it calls it first name. So since I didn't have the label for that column exactly first name, it couldn't see it, and so it's not mapping it and saying, okay, we'll go ahead and pull the first that you have as first name over into the first name field that we haven't labeled over here in the Outlook data folder. You can go ahead and go with what they've got here if it's a good match, or you can go ahead and clear all and then start from scratch. So you can say, well, in my data file, first means first name over here, the translation in the Outlook contact folder. Click and drag, let go, and there you go, it's mapped. So all my first name underneath that label is going to dump over into the first name field in Outlook, the contacts. And so then we got last for last name, and then we got title for title, and then let me scroll down just a bit. Click and drag company on top of company, and let's see, we're now down to street. Let's go ahead and scroll down. That brings up a good point. Is this a business address or a home address? Let's expand the business address and call it the business street. Click and drag it to the business street. 
So if I had in my CSV file the label for that column, Business Street, it would have automatically mapped it because, hey, we got a match. But since it didn't see it, we have to do it manually. And then we do the city to the business. I don't know if it'll do it right there. Let me scroll down, try it again. There you go. City to business city. And let me go ahead and scroll down here. State to business state and zippity do da to postal code. And then we have phone. That's next. Well, is this a business phone? Let's scroll down. There we go. There's the business phone. Let's go ahead and click and drag and see it is a business phone. In fact, you can hover in between the two column headers and click and drag out. Well, as soon as you see those arrows pointing in opposite directions, you can click and drag, and then you can see that's business phone and business phone 2. So there we go. And we've got a business fax. Let's click and drag that to the fax, and then scroll down where we've got left. We have email and web. Let's go ahead and scroll down to our emails and click to expand it. And email address, that's what it is. So let me click and drag that on top of the email address. And then the web is for web page. Okay, so I didn't have it exactly spelled it the way they had it, so it's not going to map it, but that's okay. I can click and drag it and see. Make sure that that web page address in the file goes into the web page field that's in the Outlook contact. Everything looks good. Click OK. And then, by the way, if you don't map everything, that's okay. It just means that it's not going to import that data. Especially good if you don't want to import some of the data. You don't have to stop and think that it's not going to import all the others. It will. So when we're done, just go ahead and click Finish. Hey, there we go. Awesome. There's the owner, Grant Adams, double click, and everything looks good. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.